Good evening, everyone. We're so glad uh, to be here today. God is so full of love and mercy and kindness. Um, I just want to open up a little word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, you are so kind and so good and you so obedient to God Almighty because of your love that you have for him, that you died on the cross for our sins and you were sinless. But because of your obedience and your love in God, you did just what he told you to do. And you only said what he told you to say. And Lord, you have told us that he loves us and that he cares for us and he's our shepherd. So Lord, we want to follow you. And Lord, we ask you to uh, forgive us for all our trespasses against you, Heavenly Father that we have done that was not right in your sight, and the things we have said that was not right in your ears. And we come this evening, Lord, to uh, our Bible class, uh, to study about your holy word, and how and what you've done for us, and still continue to do for us, in the past, in the now, and in the future. So Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come this evening to break bread, for one another and give out your holy word. We thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you turn to uh, the 55th chapter of Isaiah, so we, we know we're just not uh, talking about his, his word, it's his holy word. And that's why we have in class, not because uh, for ourselves, we're doing it out of obedience and honoring the Lord. Uh, see, everyone has to make a commitment uh, to God and they need to worship God in spirit and in truth. And the only way you can do that is that you have to be born again. You have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to have faith that he died on the cross for our sins and that he was sinless. And that God Almighty resurrected him from the grave. And right now he's sitting at the right hand side of the Father. Making intercessory prayers for us. Because we know not what to pray for. We can only see through his spirit. And then when we read his holy word, his word helps us to see. Uh, the world is blinding people these days. And they have a lot of people in them and rage and in war within their own self because of selfishness and sin and wickedness. And so um, turn to the 55th chapter, uh, just starting and not at the beginning, we go through some of the verses. And it says here, six verses, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him for salvation while he is near. Let the wicked leave behind his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion and mercy on him. God is merciful to all of us, it says, and to our God. He will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, I do not return there without watering the earth. May it bear and sprout, providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be, which goes out of my mouth, it will not return to me void, useless, without results, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. And so it's so important for all of us to read his holy word. Uh, the, his word is powerful. And if you have faith and belief in his word, so it will be. So it will be. And... Uh, Go to Genesis, the 50th chapter. Genesis, the 50th 
And uh, in the 19th verse, and just before I uh, read that verse, just to give you a little information, this is about uh, Joseph when he was in uh, Egypt and how he was portrayed uh, by his brothers that were jealous over him and envious over him uh, because the parents had made a difference of Joseph in between his other brothers because Joseph was born of uh, Rachel and uh, Jacob. And uh, that's who he originally really loved was uh, his wife, Rachel. That's who he had worked for in all them years for Laman, his uh, uncle. And his uncle had deceived him and given him Leah, uh, Rachel's older sister. So it, uh, Rachel was barren for many, many years. She didn't have no children. And Jacob prayed for her, and then she was blessed. Uh, but little that I know, during that time, she was worshiping idol gods, too. Hmm. And uh, it says even in uh, Genesis, and even going in uh, Exodus, that as long as they wasn't worshiping idol gods, then God was the first. He was the only God before them. She was worshiping idol gods before she got pregnant? Yes, because she had stolen. And then uh, she stopped or something? Or what? Well, I don't think she stopped because she stole the, uh, when they the idols when she left. And then she went into childbirth. She was pregnant, but she uh, she had the baby. But then uh, she died. Mm -hmm. She died. And uh -huh. so um, God is good to those who, who honor him and worship him. And, you know, do as he tell them to do. And then it, it says here, but going with that, uh, Joseph, uh, brothers, uh, put him in a pit one day. He was out there looking for him. The father told him to go see what the boys were doing. Mm -hmm. And so when he went out, they felt it was a good time to capture him. They really wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, but the older brother said, no, let's just put him in a pit. And then, uh, then they decided to sell him, and they sold him to the Egyptians as a slave. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how Joseph ended up being in Egypt. But Joseph was a, uh, he, he loved God, and he worshiped God, and he listened to God. And he uh, said what God had told him to say, because he was someone who could interpret dreams. So uh, he only interpreted what God had told him to interpret. Uh, with the different people, and he gave God all the credit and the glory for it. Mm -hmm. He didn't take any on himself. But in doing so, uh, he had told Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh had a bad dream that uh, that they were going into a famine, but he didn't know it. All he said was that uh, the corn, uh, one six ears of corn was real skinny and thin, and one was one six ears were fat. Mm -hmm. And in his dream, the, the skinny ones ate up the, uh, the you know, the fat ones. And uh, Joseph interpreted that, letting them know that it was going to be in a famine for seven years. Mm -hmm. And no one, the magicians or none of the prophets or, you know, any of the religious leaders around it were Egyptians were able to interpret the dream. And then uh, they couldn't find anyone to tell them how to handle that famine that was going to come. But Joseph knew because God told Joseph what to do. And in doing so, that Pharaoh had favor on Joseph. And he, he made him a governor. He became governor over the land. Mm -hmm. uh, because he trusted him. He even gave him his insignia ring. And that was uh, something to have that. Because whatever he stamped, that's whatever went. And You're so right. so then what had happened, cheered in the... Uh, Brothers, since it was a famine in the land, they had to come to Egypt to get grain. They didn't know Joseph was, uh, they didn't know if Joseph was even living. They had no idea he was governor. But uh, Joseph eventually went on and, and had told them that he was the son, their brother, after they brought uh, Jacob mm -hmm. to them. And then when Jacob died, they were so afraid that Joseph was going to retaliate on them. 
you know, and maybe put them in prison or have them killed. Mm -hmm. uh, it says here in the 19th verse of Genesis, the 50th uh, chapter. I might as well read 18, 17. It says, you are to say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the transgressions of your brothers in their, in their sin, but they did wrong. Now, please forgive the transgressions of the servants of uh, other God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him because they were pleading. And then his brothers went and fell down before him in confession. Then they said, Behold, we are your servants, you know, your slaves. And it said, But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Vengeance is he is not mine. As for what you meant evil against me, God meant for good in order to bring about this present outcome that many people would be kept alive as they are this day. Because by him being alive, he was able to supply them with all the food they need. Uh, they was able to move their entire family to Egypt and live in Goshen, you know, and bring all their livestock and everything there in Leah, because it was a, a famine in the land. But he would not uh, take vengeance in his own hands because he knew that that was something that God would do, not mm -hmm. him. And many times the day children of us not being in the word of God and not listening to his words, it says, our thoughts are as far away from his as, you know, the heavens, as, as the earth we get into a lot of trouble. And we need to, you know, pay, pay close attention to his word, read his word, and then listen. Listen and then, you know, do what he, uh, what he tell us to do. And then uh, go to Exodus, the first chapter. Sometimes we, we so afraid of what uh, people are gonna do. We forget that God is our, he is our shepherd. He protects us from everything. But he can't protect you when you're not doing the right thing. When he tell you to go left, you go left. When he tell you to go right, you go right. If he tell you to stand still, then you stand still. You well, a lot of people can't hear God's voice. They can't hear him because they're so disobedient. They have so not. They have not given they got themselves. To straighten up first. Right, they do. They have not uh, given their uh, self totally to God. And this is something they had to do. They had to do this in faith. And uh, that's why he tells us all the time, don't be, don't be fearful, because when you're in fear, you, you, you've been ready to sin. Because you're getting ready to take matters in your own hands. And uh, you're going to come up on the, on the short end of the stick. Well, I have something interesting. Uh, a lot of people um, came to my attention that a lot of people don't believe they're in God, or they believe there is a God, but they don't know who it is. That's you ever heard that? They think different things of God. That's agnostic and... Yeah, that's more like they, they not believing in God. There's only one God. One God. There's not uh, many gods. But some people, they, it's whatever they take. Whatever they have, they have faith, uh, in, their faith self. in, and many times it's their self. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with God, and that's why they get scared. They say, oh, I can't do that. How am I going to do this? Well, when something doesn't work be for them, right. then they get mad. They get or angry, and uh, uh, some people get so angry they want to take it out on other people. They may even want to kill somebody. And, so, and many of them do kill somebody. But... Uh, uh, many times they do because their mind uh, when you're scared you can't focus on God you can't be with God and be scared at the same time so how do you talk somebody down to okay. all you can do is give them the word mm -hmm. and you pray to God that that word is going to work because many times people's minds are in captivity of Satan they already heard so much of the world through the TV through their friends that are not with God, not connected with God at all. Mm -hmm. And so they have all that in their mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the only way that, that you can help this person is you got to stay prayerful to them and speak in the word of God. Not your words. Our words uh, mean nothing. Well, just they um, don't believe. You just had to keep you, telling them. You can't really, um, you can't tell them. All you can do is pray for them. That's what the scriptures say, just pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because I, I have uh, different believers in the crew and I saw mm -hmm. He say, Mom, I talk to my friends all the time, tell them about Jesus. But so many of them don't believe and I tell them over and over again. And they get angry and I tell them, but then, you know, you, uh, you, can't, can, you can't make nobody. You can't no, you force can't, it down their, um, their, uh, God is not going to force nobody. No, and he isn't. And I told her, I had to let him know, Jesus talked to many. And his disciples talked to many. And uh, God said, if they didn't accept them, then, you know, you just dust the dirt well, off your You know, what's interesting, what you talked about in the 50th chapter of mm -hmm. Genesis, um, Joseph and his brothers, mm -hmm. they knew, Jacob knew there was a God. Right, he did. From his father and grandfather. Right. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. His brothers knew that there was a God. Right. But they really didn't put God first. But they were acting ugly. They, they were acting, they were full of sin. They were had jealousy in them and envious in them. And that's, that don't have anything to do with God. And so and they, they also had hate in them. So you can know God and still do ugly things. The devil, the devil know all about God's word. Yeah, he knows. But he wants to be first. And they wanted to be first in their father's eyes. And since they knew they never could be first, they decided to destroy Joseph. Mm -hmm. They wanted him completely out of the picture because of the father had given him a special role in everything. But they still didn't become first. Right, they still didn't become first. In fact, it, it hurt their heart that their father wept and grieved so long over Joseph. They didn't anticipate that, that the father was going to take it so hard. But he did. And then it grieved their heart because by them having God in their heart, but see, they hadn't given themselves totally over to the Lord. See, some people try to straddle a fist at the fence. They, then they can do good over here and they can do some bad over here and then they're going to still be okay. It'll all weigh itself out. It'll weigh itself out. Even itself out. Even it, right. It'll balance out. But you can't, you can't be that way. And, uh, if you, uh, and we're going to come back around that way and we're going to see it as I'm reading. Uh, if you go to Exodus, the first chapter, mm -hmm. uh, the Pharaoh that loved Joseph that worked with him, that Pharaoh had died in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when Joseph and his family, but Joseph was there and he had married one of the Egyptian uh, women that the king had given him, uh, one of the, his daughters. Uh, now, you know what's interesting about this? Mm -hmm. Joseph had two sons. Right. By uh, his wife was an Egyptian, right? But they say uh, a king, a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, right? Because Joseph had died, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when when Jacob and all the descendants came, it was seventy of them. That's all there were. Yeah, seventy souls. It says. Seventy souls, and but, you know, by the time they left, it was sixty. 600,000 uh, souls of just from his, from his, uh, from what Jacob's tribe. Uh, it could have been more, but then it was so many other, others also. But um, the Egyptians were upset, and, the, and Pharaoh was upset because they were multiplying so much. Mm -hmm. You know, having uh, so many babies. Yeah. And it was so many of them. Uh, and they had uh, put the Israelites, which was uh, Jacob, he was, his name was Israel, and those were Israelite children, they had forced them in severe slavery. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. they made them, it uh, says on the 
14th verse and made their lives bitter with hard labor and motor grit and all the kinds of field work. All their labor was harsh and severe. Um, and the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra, which stand for beauty, and the other ones named Pura, splendor. And uh, these were nurses. They were midwives. And it says um, in the 16th verse, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women, this is what he told them to do. See them on the birth stool. If it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, she shall live. See, they wanted to kill the uh, the men, the male males off because you know, oh, it could be plenty of women, but without a male, you're not gonna have no baby. You know, in today's society, they have uh, this world that we live in have figured out a way to uh, to get men sperm and artificially inseminate women. Uh, to make them pregnant, you know, all kind of things are going on in this world today that, you know, God don't like. But back then, they didn't uh, want all these males to be living, so they wanted them killed off. It says in 17th uh, verse, but the midwives feared God. Mm -hmm. This is what my topic is on. Feared God with profound reverence. Profound reverence. See, God wants us to have a profound reverence toward him mm -hmm. to that, that's what compel us in our heart to do the right thing no matter uh who's telling it's us what to do that's right and it gives you a profound reverence and uh they did not do as the king of egypt commanded but they let the baby boys live Mm -hmm. And anybody else probably was, if anybody who wasn't of God, you know, they, they, they did just what he told them to do, kill them. But they had this profound reverence of God. They just wanted to do what God has told them to do. Well, it said, then, they, they didn't do what he said. No, they didn't do what Pharaoh wanted them to do. Pharaoh wanted them to kill them, kill the baby boys. Right, but they, didn't but they do said that. Uh, they feared God with profound reverence and did not do as the God. king. So when you fear God, you won't do what the world is telling no, you to do. No, no, not at all. If you fear God, because you know uh, God Nothing is the one. What did say? With profound reverence. Profound reverence. And see, you don't you don't want to do that. You don't, you do not want to uh, go against the Lord in, in, in no kind of no way, no hell uh, kind of way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that? Because it, uh, as we get in, I, I can turn the Exodus now and show tell you why I'm saying this. Because you get messed up. Mm -hmm. You get totally messed up. Uh, you'll be walking one day. And God is the same today. Right. You may be walking one day and before you know it, your, your drawers and everything is showing. You know. And uh, it says here, oh, even in the uh, seventh chapter of Exodus, Exodus what? I'm not there yet, I'm sorry. I was in the wrong one. I was in the wrong one, I'm sorry. I need to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy? Mm -hmm. Y'all bear with me. God is good. Uh, to all of those who love him. <laughs> Hallelujah. To those that love God. Yeah, for those who love God. So he ain't good to everybody. No, that's why I said to those who... He, you know what, God is... Uh, he, he loves us, and he's merciful to give everybody a chance to uh, repent and to do better. But uh, many people don't listen to God, and they think they're doing it. They say, look what all I have got. All they this. won't even listen to their parents. No, they, they, they may kill their parents if they got a lot of money. They don't even want to wait for them to die, you know, to get their inheritance. Mm. It says here in the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. 
And this is why we, we're in class, because everyone needs to know we're supposed to be teaching our children and all that. Yeah, we do. As we, if we, you are a child of God. Which we have but done. But the devil's teaching his children to right. be bad. That's right. He's teaching his kids. Right, how to make it in the world. And see, the world don't love God. So if you are this world, that means you, you're God's enemy. You teach them exactly what to do. Right, exactly what to do. And this chapter say, the first verse said, now this is a, is a command, the statutes and judgment, the precepts which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you so that you might do, follow, and obey them in, in the land which you are crossing over the joy to possess. Now, wait a minute. Aren't churches supposed to be teaching what we're teaching? The church is you. About God? The church is you. The people in the building. That's what I'm talking about. The whole church. The whole the church, body of Christ. The body of Christ. Is supposed to be teaching God's commandments. That's saying right. what he says. That's right. Not what they want to say. That's right. But as you know, some churches are um, under the authority of Satan. They're in it for a business. Mm -hmm. They're not in it for, they're not about the Lord's business. They're about their business. If you go there, they may say, this is my church. If you don't like it, you can leave. That's not too um, godly, loving. It's not loving at all. And they may come in there poor, broken, don't have much, much and need a plate of food. And they may say, well, uh, let me see your income tax statement. Where you work at, person hungry and everything. Have you been paying tithes here? You know, but then we can't help you. Where, where your family live? Who are they? Now where did that come from? I wonder. From business people probably being there. That it's not saved and not of God, because uh, God wants us to love. He said, His commandment is to love one another as He's loved us, and to seek the best for one another. Seek the best. So if somebody's hungry, you're supposed to feed them. That's what's worse. Not, not question them like that. They're hungry. That, that's not showing them any kind of love or kindness like God has done. None of that. Uh, basically, they act them like Jacob, unfortunately. You know, Jacob's uh, brother, uh, Esau, was hungry. He'd been out hunting <clears throat> all mm -hmm. day, and he came in, and uh, there Jacob was making some stew and cornbread, I guess. And uh, he, uh, well, he Esau said, said, I'm so hungry, I'm going to die. Right. And he said, what will you give him? That's what the church said. Give me, give me, uh, what, I want to know what you're making, all of that, where you live, who's in your family, all of that. And then we'll decide. So that's how you, can, you, you can actually tell the fake church from the real church. Right. The fake then church we decide. Uh, don't walk in love. Right. There's no love of God in them. But I've seen churches that are full of love. The person come in, they're hungry, or they've been destitute because their house caught on fire. Mm -hmm. They said, take them to the pantry. Mm -hmm. And they get out loads of food and cans and all kind of things to give them that, mm -hmm. that'll last a long time. And then they uh, tell them what days they're going to have the food, you know, plates of food, and they can just come there and bring their family and everything. And they have a bank to give them some money. What bills you owe? And then they go pay their bills. Mm -hmm. So it is, God has his churches out there that is doing a remarkable good job. But then some are not. And then it says here, uh, still in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, mm -hmm. the second verse, it says, so that you and your son and your grandson may fear and worship the Lord your God with all filled reverence and profound respect. See, when you when we have that in us, reverence. and I do, and many people do. So fear you, you is reverence. Yeah, we respect. You know, the, the, the bow your head. Reverence down. God means to fear God. Right, and you, we worship in them with commitment. See, these people have commitment. The, the midwives had commitment. They had committed their life to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was good about uh, the midwives, uh, going back to that Exodus, the first chapter, it said, uh, and they knew they was going to get questioned mm -hmm. uh, by Pharaoh, but God, probably, I know he already told them what to say. 
And it says, so the king of Egypt called the midwives and said, now why have you done this thing and allowed the baby boys to live? And the midwives answered Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian when they are vigorous and give birth quickly and their babies are born before the midwife can get them. <laughs> In other words, they didn't come out so fast. The midwife then already, you know, before she can even grab them, uh, you know, maybe a mother or sister or somebody there, they already took the baby before they can even get to them. And said, so God was good to the midwives and the people of Israel multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared, see, getting to this God with profound reverence. Mm -hmm. We need that today, sure. Profound reverence. He established families and households for them. And then uh, Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born to the Hebrews must be thrown into the now, but every daughter you shall keep alive. Because like I said, you, they, they didn't care if there was a lot of women, you know, around, but they didn't want all those. They never counted us as a person anyway. They counted men and males as uh, being the warriors and the ones who could fight and do all of that. The women were never really counted. Because when they left Egypt, it said 600,000 men, it then the women weren't numbered and the children weren't numbered. Where did you get that? From your commentary of the Bible? Yes, it's right from the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, what was done there. They didn't count them, and that's the Exodus, the 12th 12. chapter of Exodus 12 what? Uh, 37. Yeah, 600,000. Mm-hmm. Men on foot, besides sure. the women and the children. So they wasn't counted. And then it was also a, a mixed multitude. Yes, there's a mixed multitude. Of non Israelites from foreign nations. With them, and flocks, and right. birds, and much cattle. Very right. much cattle. Right. Because they had already asked Pharaoh before if they had even had the cattle. They had to take uh, livestock with them so they could offer. Uh, offer the sacrifice offerings to God, you know, for allowing them to go. But if, but if we could get back to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, mm -hmm. it says, so that your son and your grandson may fear and worship the Lord your God with I feel reverence and profound respect. The only way they can do this, we have to teach them. It says to keep and actively do all his statutes and his commandments, which I have I am commanding you all the days of your life so that your days may be for long. So it's not just one day I'm going to act good or I'm going to do this for this person. He wants us to be this way for our entire life. And actively doing it, that means we have faith. When we uh, Faith is an action word, so we, we actively uh, doing what he tells us to do. And the third verse says, therefore, listen. O Israel, be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may um, increase greatly in number as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in the land of flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sixth verse says, uh, well, the fifth verse says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind. Well, that fourth verse is important. Right. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The one, the Lord is one and only God, as it says. That's important. And it, then it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength, your entire being. And it says, These words, as I already said, His words are not going to go out void. They're going to do what they say. These words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind. He, he named this church. Mm -hmm. And it says, you shall teach them diligently to your children, impressing God's precepts on their mind and penetrating their hearts with his truths. And shall speak of them when you sit in your house mm -hmm. and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up. 
and uh, it says, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, your forearm, and they shall be used as bands or frontals or frontlets on your forehead. So he want this to truly, truly be in us. So how does that parallel with our times today? It's, it's, nothing has changed. Uh, I'm a, I'll go to that. Because they were in the, the wilderness. We're in the wilderness now. We don't know what's going on from one day to the next. Now the news will tell us anything. Anything. Uh, there's viruses up on the earth right now and all kinds of diseases and pestilence now. So we're in the wilderness. We're in the right wilderness. Now. We're in the wilderness. The climate change, you know, is, is over hot in some places and the earth is on fire right now. Now, he was telling them this before they went into the promised land. Right. The land of milk and honey, because you read that, right? Right. He's trying to, to get them established yeah. in their mind. In the land flowing with them. Right. And then the 13th verse says, you shall... Now, how does that parallel with today, the land of milk and honey? Well, the thing of it is... What is the land of milk and honey? You know, because deception is everywhere. And we live in a world now that's uh, very deceptive. Well, the land of milk and honey was the land that you had more than enough. Right. Abundance. Right. Jesus said he came that we may have life Everything and may abundance. have it more abundance. Abundantly until it runs over. The only way you have that is in Christ. Is in Christ, because man does not live by bread alone. Yeah, Get back to the thing. word, but he lives by every word uh, that comes out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in in that, he said uh, the reason he allowed them to be hungry was because he wanted them to depend on him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they would know that he is a God and that he was the one that was given to them. It was not uh, coming by themselves because they didn't have time to prepare any food or anything when they left Egypt. They had to hurry up and get out of there. And so uh, God... They had more than enough right now when they right. were in the, the wilderness. Right. Their shoes didn't even wear out. No, their shoes didn't wear out of anything like that. But um, go to Exodus, the 15th chapter. And he's, he just keeps saying the same thing over and over to us. Mm -hmm. It says the 26th chapter. 26th chapter. Well, the 15th chapter, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, don't go there yet. You get me excited asking me about all this stuff. Well, I'm um, trying to um, make it plain to our viewers or whoever may be, you know, looking at this video and plus the people in here that the, the Old Testament is a parallel life to what we're living right now. Right. In Christ. If you're not in Christ, because some of these people wasn't in Christ. No, it said that, and, that and they had met with all not these other people. In Christ, uh, the first generation died in the wilderness. They didn't go into the promised land. No, they didn't because of their disbelief and uh, everybody from twenty years and younger made mm -hmm. it in there, and plus Joshua and and uh, what was it, Caleb, Caleb. But all the rest of them died. Right in the wilderness in them 40 years. But the reason they wanted to, uh, they wanted the children to be taught this because some of them was being born that hadn't been in Egypt under slavery. Yeah, they were teaching the and children. And so they wanted them uh, wanted them to, to know about this so they wouldn't turn their uh, but back the on. But some of the ones teaching them, that's the ones that died in the wilderness. Right, a, a lot of them did die. 
And uh, as it says here in Exodus, the 15th chapter, the 26th verse, uh, and this is because the people were growing uh, discontent and they were grumbling. Uh, in this uh, chapter, the 15th verse, there was uh, discontent because they uh, needed water to drink. And so when uh, Moses yeah. had uh, led them to the water, uh, they they tasted the water and the water was bitter. And so uh, they couldn't drink the water. That was in the 23rd uh, verse. And so um, they were grumbling at Moses and, um, you know, they were angry. And it says, uh, then he, Moses cried to the Lord for help. And the uh, Lord showed him a tree, a branch, which he threw into the waters and the water became sweet. See, because uh, Moses had this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Moses did have a profound reverence toward God. Yeah, you know, so when he called on God for help, God always helped him. And so um, he cried to the Lord for help, and the Lord told him what to do. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and there the Lord made a statue and an audience uh, for them, and there he tested them, saying, if you will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and listen to his commandments, and keep foremost in your thoughts, and actively obey them, all his precepts and statutes, then I will put, I will not put any diseases which I'll put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And if you curl up that with the day, he still heals all of us today. Yeah, if you believe in him. If, if you believe him, and if you uh, diligently listen and pay attention, uh, you know, and actively obey, and actively obey means that you're doing it. It's not just a, a lip service saying that you're going to do it. And then he's looking at our very thoughts. Yeah. He, can, he can see the thoughts because uh, in that... Uh, Isaiah 50, 55 is said in the 8th verse of the 55th chapter it said for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways declares the Lord and so this this is why he he has to tell us what to do and then we had to um, follow what he tells us to do because he know the right way well it sounds like what you're saying let me what I'm picking up, without God, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. All you, all we're gonna do is fail, and um, and die. Right and, in the wilderness. In the wilderness, what God has done in the New Testament, which I love about God, He's given us His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes. He He came into the world so that we uh could receive uh, eternal life. Not only do you receive eternal life, sins. right, because of our sins and everything, he's if given. If you receive him. If you receive him, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our lifeline to God. If you receive Jesus. I just said yes, that if you, yeah, if you receive him. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you had to, you had to believe. And God was constantly trying to teach the people. That's why he rained the uh, bread from heaven, the mamma. Uh, in, the four, in the 16th verse of Exodus, I'm getting there. Uh, the, 16th chapter. Yeah, the fourth verse, it says. Which one is that? I do that too. The 16th chapter, the fourth verse. Do the same thing. The people were still complaining. Now they were complaining about the food. Now, and they had grew discontent again. So they continuously complaining. Right, continuously complaining. In the second verse, it said the whole congregation of the Israelites grew discontented and murmured and rebelled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, I'm going to tell you all right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to have the word and the Bible teaching. We're not going to be able to get through this all in 
one sitting or in a month of sitting because this is the word of God. You had to digest, you got to eat it, and then it got to work in you. And, and hopefully... Almost like medicine. Right, His like word medicine, is medicine. Because... Uh, medicine don't work right away. No, not right away. Because our minds are polluted from uh, false teaching and from lies we've heard from TV and news and different things like that. And the word of God is going to clean us up. It's like uh, a cathartic. It's like an enema. To get the junk out of you. So we can see through the word. Because right now we... we uh, some of y'all are blind, uh, crippled, and some of you don't even have uh, the right mind. You're no, not in you your right mind. Your mind. Mm -hmm. And some people may be in a, uh, they may even say you're blind, crippled, and crazy. And we are without the word of God. So y'all be patient, and wherever we uh, giving y'all verses, go read them. But I think, read first them. of all, what everybody has to do is be honest with yourself, regardless of who you think you are. I mean, degrees you got. Right. And how many languages you can speak. Mm -hmm. You got to be as honest with yourself honest with and yourself. say, I am not there yet. Right. I don't really know who God is. Right. That's what a young man told me. I don't really know who God is. Right. And then I was telling him some scriptures. Mm -hmm. To read. And, and he study. was saying... Well, how is that true? I, I talked to him about authority. Mm -hmm. And he would say, well, if God put people in authority, why is so many people getting killed and shot and all of that? I said, because you have to be led by the Spirit. Amen. And he was saying, I don't understand. Right. See, if you don't have God in your life. You don't understand. If you don't have the Word of God. You can't understand because the Holy Spirit is what teaches you. He teaches and Once you receive God Christ mm -hmm. and you let God know, I ain't there yet. And right. Stop trying to pretend like you're all of that. Right. That you already made it. And you know, and, and talking about people and doing things to people and right. not teaching your kids the word of God, just letting them be out some heathens out there. Right. Running around. You could expect anything. Right. That's them to true. do anything. That's true. Like you said, kids are killing their parents. They are. For the money. For the money. For the money. It talks about that in uh, when Paul was writing to Timothy. First Second Timothy talks a lot about that. Right. And so, um, you know, and it's because their minds are caught up they looking, you know, through through their eyes and listening with their ears and getting the uh, the worldly things in them, but they're not getting God's commandments in them to love one another and seek the best for one another. Because if they had that in their heart and in their mind, they would never, ever, ever do anything like that. They just wouldn't do that. And it says uh, in the fourth verse in the 16th chapter, it asks us, then... The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I cause bread to rain from heaven. So God was constantly taking care of them. He gave them the water. Even though they was acting ugly. Right. That's now, what people need to see. Just like mm -hmm. uh, people are acting ugly now, God still gives you rain. Right. If you're in the land of Goshen. Right. Because if he didn't allow it to rain like <laughs> it was in the wilderness all there. week, the whole earth will burn up. It's burning in parts of the earth right now. It sure is. It's real hot. It's a drought. Right. And it says, because I will cause bread to rain from heaven for you, the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day so that I may test them to determine whether or not they will walk obediently in my instruction." Because the Lord is, yes, and the Lord is taking us through steps today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going through in your life, but if you read and study the Word of God and pray sincerely to God, uh, that you, and, and let Him know that you, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Confess your sins openly to Him, and He's faithful to forgive you. Just confess, you know, I, I haven't been doing right, Lord, have mercy on me. 
by believing your son, Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for my sins, and you sent him here just for me. And that all the sins I did, that uh, he took account forgiven. of that for me. He paid the cost for that. And I believe that I'm forgiven, that you have forgiven me, Lord. And I want to become a part of you. I want to be in your life, Lord. And just forgive me, and you will be forgiven. And you will receive the Holy Spirit. You can ask him to allow you to receive the Holy Spirit. Those who do not believe they have the Holy Spirit, get on your knees. If you're not able to get on your knees and you're on a sick bed of affliction, just pray that he allow you to receive the Holy to Spirit. Receive God. I mean, but I just said that. Jesus. They already said that. They, yeah. I just told them how they could, could receive Christ. And then ask them for the Holy Spirit so he can lead you and direct your mind. Direct your mind so you can become healed in the name of Jesus. And that's all I had to say tonight. That we need to be in a profound reverence with God and worshiping him and letting him direct our lives. Well, dinner. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>